Now, recently I talked about the Airbus A340-300 and how little power it had. Look at this airplane really, really does struggle to take off. Literally right before the runway ends. That is actually an insane sight because it's powered by four CFM56 engines, which also powers the much smaller A320. You know, to actually put the low performance to a scale, to a number, I use something called the thrust to weight ratio. You know, just like cars, right? power to weight. Where the A340 sits not very happily as a series, the 300 has a thrust to weight ratio of 0.19 and the A340-200 even a lower 0.18. Planes like the Boeing 757 have a TW of 0.34, which after all is nearly double. Isn't that crazy? Other long range jet airliners like the 777 that have 0.3. Interesting with the E190 is a bit overpowered. It has 0.33 to 0.35 of a trust to weight ratio, which almost puts it in the same category as interestingly, the Concorde, which had a thrust to weight ratio of 0.7 to 0.8 as the all time record holder. But everybody, the question arises, was the Airbus A340 with the very low rating, the least powerful ever plane made? No, but rather it was the first jet airliners ever made that really struggled with performance because they were powered by this engine. The JT3C engines, which you could find on the early versions of the Boeing 707, which had a thrust to weight ratio of 0.19 and the DC-8 with a thrust to weight ratio of 0.18. These engines had so little power back then that these planes needed water injection to take off properly, which I actually never saw before. Look at a wet takeoff on the 707. Basically, you can spray water to the incoming air or fuel mixture or directly into the combustion chamber to cool certain parts of the induction system. Which is why just a few years after these airplanes were built, both the DC-8 and the 707 switched to the JT-4A engines. Much more powerful. Instead of just like 11 to 12,000 pounds, we now had 17,000 pounds. And that was what really gave the 707 and the DC-8 the capability to fly properly. But everybody, let's go and reverse those changes. Welcome aboard the 707. This right here is an upgraded engine model visually. But aerodynamically, and in terms of the flight model, I've turned these engines into one of the first jet airliner engines with an incredibly low amount of power. Like, I mean, back in the day, runways tended to be a bit shorter. For example, LaGuardia Airport, where we're at right now, had a runway extension in 1965. You can actually see the process of them expanding these runways into the water, which you can see nowadays. But if you brought the 707 into properly usable weights, we might get in trouble with those at least powerful engines in the world. Let's go ahead and take off. Yes, look at that. N1. Not necessarily moving. Yeah, that's because the parking brake is set. Let's go and release the parking brake and just see if we can take off. All I can see is a huge amount of noise. Yeah, these old turbojet engines were small, but very noisy and very high pitched as well. Let's go ahead and uh, we are genuinely, we're, we're taking so long to take off. That is actually insane. Oh my God, that is such a long that is just ins we're going full power all right 100 knots that is actually insane oh wow come on Let's take off yeah 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 no please please take off oh my god that was the closest thing since donald trump absolutely unbelievable now granted we took off with way too much flaps i just realized that that couldn't have been good for gaining speed yeah, when we run this airplane at maximum takeoff weight, it's like actually genuinely funny. This thing doesn't really climb. Come on, get off now. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of working out. Oh, I just really want this to take off, please. All right, let's go and gain speed down here. Okay, maybe it was the flaps. Uh, I mean, granted, we have quite a lot of weight in here, but it's just, <laughs> that's that's very funny. Now, of course, also because the 707 was quite a popular airplane, um, there's tons and tons of little, you know, um, overruns. You know, overruns happen here. Maybe a little bit of this. Maybe a little bit of that. Maybe a little bit of this, you know. 
Oh, wow. Maybe a little bit of that. Jeez. I mean, generally, this GT3C engine was a problem. Yeah, the first variant of the 707 was underpowered, ear-splittingly loud, lacked true intercontinental range, and was astronomically expensive for customers because these engines were uh, not good. And the DC-8 had really the same issue. The first plane wasn't really necessarily good. The DC-810, which was followed up by the 63 and the 71, for example, as well, with, as you can see, even from the pictures, far better engines than the initial one. Once again, same issue very little power let's not go full weight this time let's maybe go ahead and reduce the flaps to uh 15 degrees and that will definitely help us gain some speed but problematically the dc8 had the same engines as a 707 but was quite a little bit heavier meaning the thrust to weight ratio is 0.18 extremely underpowered let's go ahead and take off come on give me all you got you're a strong jet airliner you're the first one of the first jet airliners um come on all right all right look at this yeah yeah there we go that's a little bit better now probably because we're running this airplane almost empty but thinking about that it's not necessarily i mean it's not a huge climber we're climbing right now at a vertical speed of 1000 feet per minute and that's pretty much the most we could do and all we do is make the city think that an airplane is flying right by their ear because this airplane was so loud Great stuff. I mean, there must be a reason that the DC-810 needed 3,600 meters of runway to properly take off on maximum takeoff weight. Whereas more modern airplanes of the same size, maybe the 767 News uses 2,500 meters of runway. Like flying this air airplane at like high altitude airports must be so scary as well, I imagine. Yeah, like think about like Aspen and the Colorado mountains, you know? This is not gonna, it's not gonna work very well. Let's go, uh, let's go full power. Let's go and release the brakes and see it. See if we can take out. Probably not. Even though this is quite a long runway, to be fair. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Uh, are we going to reach positive speed? Oh, wow. This is not really struggling. Let's go faster. Go. Okay. Okay. You're looking good, airplane. You're, I'm um, proud of you. Very proud. You're doing an amazing job. Uh, we are now close to uh, 100, 100 knots. This might work. Not sure. Yeah, it might work. It might work. It might work. We might work. Let's go uh, pull up the nose. Yeah. Uh. Oh, go now. Uh, oh, that was a slight tail strike. Doesn't matter. We uh, we actually have been able to take off. That's good news. Let's go and use the hilariously long landing gear lever to move the landing gear up. Good. But alright, I kind of want to see what it's like to land the 707. Will this go? Will this go okay? Will this be okay? But, you know, I kind of want to see what it's like to land with these old engines. Come on, so this is okay. We need to actually go full power on a. Come on, give me all you got, airplane. All right, look at this. Ugh. Oh, yeah, that was not smooth. But here we go. Let's go ahead and stop now. Reverse thrust applied. Yeah, there we go. Maximum into the braking. And, you know, back in the day, the reverse thrust wasn't really necessarily good. And considering that this is a max braking landing, not, 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 not the best anyway. You know, this is great to look at how much airplanes have really improved. Although, I mean, this is 70 years ago. It's interesting how the looks of the planes haven't really changed the blueprint. But in the details, lots of differences. So thank you guys so much for watching this pretty useless video and i'll see you guys tomorrow as always good night and a special thanks goes out to my members my supporters <laughs> guns killer r27 james deram that dude anime gods of gaming derek insider plane nishititsu finer professional jamal ryland williams and new the york you've got beautiful names